So hi, uh, thanks for coming and thanks for the organizers for arranging the talks this way. My talk had plenty of intro uh, by Jacob and Matthew prior. Ring City had a funeral here. I see many uh, Monero enthusiasts uh, here. Th uh, thank you for two. What I have here is recent advance from Monero Research Lab on Ring City. We overcame the, the lin sublinear uh, scaling problem, also the mix and match attack. Uh, there will be a part of my talk where I'll have to stop because this uh, parts of this research is still uh, confidential information and I won't have time for questions either because I'll have to jump in for my team in the other room. So ring signatures, it was greatly introduced by Jacob. I couldn't can do better. Basically it enables uh, a group uh, to sign a message. Um, no, it allows you to sign a message on behalf of a group instead of yourself without leaking identity or, or, or anything about your uh, public key. And the good thing about th uh, this is that choosing the other public keys for this ring requires no co coordination besides uh, publishing it, uh, for example, on a blockchain. So you can just uh, select an uh, um, samples from previous transactions and they have uh, nothing to do with their private keys on this. Uh, we can make this even better with multilayering. So you make your spend signature splitting up your balance in L parts, forming a matrix, and you only have to prove for the blockchain that you know an entire column of this uh, matrix. That's basically your private key here. The problem with this one is that now we require coordination from the other guys because uh, with, with this column, all public keys can be only used once. The CT part of Ring City, the confidential transactions are what's hiding the amount. So ring signatures are hiding your identity and confidential transaction schemes are hiding the amounts you are sending. We are doing it uh, with Pedersen commitments and range proofs. You see that uh, topologically we are trying to reach uh, some linearity here. So first we lock in the amount you want to spend and then your way to not be able to play with different linear combinations for the same amount by range proofs. So you can't have negative uh, stuff. And, and uh, I think that's uh, public research that we have improvements on range proofs too, uh, called bullet proofs from uh, Bootle, but that's for another talk. So, a uh, quick intro on commitment schemes. A commitment scheme is an algorithm that um, has an input and a random nonce. They are equal if uh, with a different uh, nonce on the same input, they are the same. They are hiding if with the same random nonce with different inputs are the same. And it's binding if the probability of differentiating two different uh, a commitment scheme on inputs and randomness are below uh, a bound you define. This may uh, sound a little hard. Uh, the, an easier way we cryptographers uh, like to explain is that you are in a room, there is a computer with a keyboard, you enter something, data leaves the room, you have nothing to do about that, it's a black box and something came in. And you have to decide whether you are in a world where it's random junk uh, coming into the computer or it depends on your input. So the closer your chances are to 50-50 with this game, the better security ha you have. This is just an example of that. If the probability of differentiating, is it random or the same equal commitment scheme, if 50-50 you are good, and B is the dif differentiate uh, from this 50-50 probability. So Ring City now has uh, three algorithms, uh, a key generation, basic stuff, uh, uh, a key image, a public key, uh, a spending that pr uh, outputs a spend signature from the secret keys, the key images, the matrix that we talked about uh, now, uh, commitments that you know uh, an entire column of this matrix, the uh, commitment that can open up uh, this. This is the trapdoor in this cryptographic scheme, and of course the message you want to uh, provide uh, into an adversary. And uh, a verification for all these uh, inputs. The current weakness uh, sees for this besides scalability, we know that currently we need uh, OL times N 
uh, size of proofs and both Matthew and Jacob uh, explained how it won't work once, uh, for example, Monero blockchains got uh, uh, much, much bigger. But there are the mathematical uh, problems here that uh, there are some elements in this finite field that you can't make uh, the commitments on for the matrices. For example, the null elements, you can do that. Uh, and of course, the mix and match attack that was presented last year in a white paper, de-anonymizing Monero, is just half of the story. It's not a, a technically easily feasible attack, but it exists uh, by uh, sending a signature with the same key but different key images. It's really basic stuff. Less entropy is less security. So. Uh, we appended uh, two new definitions of balance uh, at Monero Research Lab in for these schemes. The first is key image uniqueness. So double span checking works now by uh, checking that your key images hasn't been used ever on the blockchain before. And extractability, it's a, it's a proof that you as a spender have a trapdoor key that hides you the the index of the matrix, which holds your real private key and not just the junk, is just to prove that you have this key. You don't have to provide it. It's uh, zero knowledge. So string city, RTRS, uh, ring city, RTRS, string city, we still haven't decided which name we will go on with this scheme. Uh, most likely it will be RTRS, just this. It's uh, actually the abbreviation of the names of the authors of the white paper. So, uh, instead of Pedersen commitments, we choose Algamal commitments with Fiat Shamir transforms. Fiat Shamir transform uh, basically is a really uh, fancy way of making a pr proof of knowledge non interactive and zero knowledge. It's not quite uh, efficient. Or rather, if you start from scratch making it non interactive zero knowledge, you will probably get better results. But uh, Fiat Shamir transform is, is um, sufficient for, for this use case. Uh, thus, we can get rid of the Schnorr variants of multi six because uh, even though Schnorr uh, proofs scale really well and they are highly efficient, they have this interactive part. So if you try to eliminate uh, multiple rounds of communication with spender and verifier you are no you are just a step back because you have to hash everything uh, append it make another proof and you are uh, leaving the the scalable uh, margin again and the headline here is that our result this scheme results in o log n overhead for proofs instead of o l times n so it's feasible on Ethereum or in Bitcoin, but for other reasons too. The key theorem here is that every Pedersen commitment or Algamal, Algamal ciphertext can be lifted as an Algamal commitment. Uh, for Pedersen uh, commitments, it's easy. You just have to append your second generator on the decommitment error. And for Algamal, we know that, uh, that for every multiplicatively homomorphic commitment to one, is a valid multiplicative additively homomorphic uh, commitment to zero. And we only have to prove that we know an opening to zero, that we are not creating balance on the blockchain from thin air, no, no other amounts involved. So we can use this little trick for here. This achieves us the sublinearity and stealth addresses. So you can use the same public key on the blockchain multiple times but the tra reading just the transaction on the chain won't link me to your uh, public key. So it's harder for nasty three-letter agencies to track down your, your transaction history. Uh, in this new scheme, uh, there was um, quite some attention on, on commitments and decommitments because in this new scheme, we redefine public keys and key images uh, as commitments, and your decommitments, uh, your single decommitment is your uh, private key. And uh, you just have to append this non interactive zero knowledge proof by the Fiat Shamir transfer that you have this uh, opening commitment. 
First, yes, you can open the public key to, the, to your key images. Agama have a really, has a really nice homomorphic uh, property that you don't have to do on-chain or off-chain the round that I have the decommitment for the public key that has the same key image. That will be a lot of computational and storage overhead. You can do directly public key quotient group commitment of the key image because as the, on the previous slides, we see that using the same uh, randomness value, zero, is hiding uh, in a commitment scheme. That was the first part. Can we, yeah, more, 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 a little, more, more, one more, I think. No, one more. Yeah, this one. The so the first part is our trick here. We can. Uh, cut two steps on the verification because we are hiding, we are using a hiding commitment scheme with Elgama. Thanks, we can. Yep. Yep. Next one, you have to prove that you know the secret in the index uh, in the matrix that holds your private key. We can use the same trick on every uh, column of this uh, matrix to get n commitments to zero, and this is the part uh, that. Uh, I won't have time to explain, and I can't really explain until the uh, publish uh, uh, of the white paper. Uh, Bootle made a, a modification of the growth and uh, call wise uh, non interactive zero knowledge proof. Uh, basically, you input these matrices of commitments that you claim that you can open up to zero, and the return value is that how many of them actually opens up to zero. So how how do we use this on the blockchain? What what all this is about? So we uh, replaced public keys and private keys with commitments and decommitments for achieving uh, scalability and more privacy. So we can use these key images we used in the spending and verifying algorithms as public keys on the blockchain. So we achieved key image uniqueness, the new uh, security definition we introduced. So lack of entropy with users and transactions won't affect your privacy anymore. The reduced overhead won't give us the extractability. This is a mistake in the presentation. It will give us the scalability. Pedersen commitments will hide our amounts that we are spending. And the multi-layer links are hiding our metadata as uh, users. And the second part of our headline here that this scheme works with any group that we assume Diffie-Hellman is hard. This means any known uh, cryptographically used uh, elliptic curve, for example, SECP256K1 used in Bitcoin. And I exactly do did that. So the impl work in progress implementation, the guys at Monero Re Research Lab allowed me to start, is actually uh, targeted toward Ethereum and not Monero. But it will be blockchain agnostic. This means that you can do ring signatures on Bitcoin, Monero, and Ethereum with the same library. It's using OpenSSL. It supports plenty of elliptic curves, except the useful ones. So uh, we will need uh, either they will have to accept my Montgomery patch, or I have to introduce a level of ab abstraction. Sorry, developers, and you, if uh, you are here. And some of you know that my specialty in Ethereum Foundation research is uh, quantum proof uh, cryptography. And of course, there is a quantum proof uh, ring learning with errors generalization of this scheme on the way long term. So thanks for your attention. Hope uh, I can um, publish the, the white paper with the lab bit more specific uh, after the conference. Feel free to ask me questions after I've, I've left the room on the way or after the Evozum talk next room. Thanks. <laughs>